get ready for this story. Turn your page and close your eyes. It's ready to begin.
Okay, good. Well, we're here at Studio 420 in Seattle, and it's about noon on Monday the 29th, the day before the revolution. <laughs> that some of the uh, peaceful protesters were trying to stop people from... The, some of the so-called peaceful protesters actually used forced physical intervention, including even pepper spray, to protect the corporations until the police could show up and protect them for them. She can get out and join us because it's time to make a stand. I can't tell my children that this is the world we've left in. We have to stand up and stop this. Microsoft, Boeing, Bank of America, U.S. Bank, Fidelity Investments, all of those companies who had their shit fucked with on that day had invested in the WTO meetings and they paid for the meetings to be in Seattle. Like those, those meetings cost millions of dollars. The money came from somewhere and it wasn't the U.S. government. It, those, the, the money for those meetings came from those corporations and that's why people targeted those corporations on that day. Every cop that uh, works for the force is, is working today and uh, they have riot gear and uh, there are at least two specially trained medical teams here in town equipped with drugs to treat victims of a possible biological terrorist attack. As Viv Vivian Phillips of the mayor's office told us earlier this morning. We'd like to stress that we are not aware of any potential for that kind of attack. And police and chief care. Stamper says his crew is trained for this type of stuff. They're, they're acting with, uh, with expected and very professional restraint. They've had an awful lot of training and education uh, over many, many months. And they've also, uh, many of them uh, had experience, have had experience in dealing with demonstrations in our city. in a way that I don't like advocating reform or abolition of some particular institution. At least there are 50,000 people that really care and are worked up about something. And hopefully we can come out here and give them a shove in a little more radical direction. And it's a hell of an opportunity to, to uh, show that the problem with the WTO is the same problem that all 
all the institutions that fill our lives are guilty of. There's people other than ourselves in control of our lives. They just keep getting further and further away from us and more and more powerful. I don't care whether they're making decisions that I like or whether I hate. The fact that they're making those decisions is unhealthy and unnatural. And so I'm hoping that we can come out here and get crazy and fuck enough shit up that every city in the world knows that it can't host a WTO conference and it better give control back to the people of their own lives or else that city is going to be torn to pieces. Okay, here we go. We're back in Eugene again, and uh, uh, more media has shown up. Uh, the New York Times is now in Eugene, been here for about a week, and uh, so right now they're supposed to be in this house right here doing interviews with people, so we're going to go in and check them out. New York Times. Generations in Eugene. Generations. The 60s and mm -hmm. today. All right. I've been talking to lots of different folks. How's it been going? It's been nice. I've had a good time. I've met right. a lot of cool people. Did WTO bring this about? Actually, what brought this about was that I used to date a girl who was born in a bus here. I've always wanted to be in a revolution. <laughs> That's why I'm here. Also, man, this is it. This is the end of the 20th century, which has been filled with so much brutality and exploitation in the name of profit. This is our chance. This is our moment to say no, no more, no way, never again. I mean, they have so much power, but today, we have the power, and we're going to show them that we're not afraid, and we're fighting for what's right, we're not going to back down, we're going to stand our ground, because we're right, we're fighting for what's right, they know it too, we all know it, but the people who want to get rich, like the people who are going into the WTO to meet, they're, they're, they're going to be forced to listen to the voice of the people, the whole world is going to listen to the voice of the people, they cannot ignore us, there's and we are not afraid. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. <laughs> yeah, fuck Disney World. <laughs>
winds, seven seas, relative humanities. Everywhere I look, I see someone looking back at me. Nation states and borderlines, divided states of mind. Politics comes to blows, and everybody wants to know whose world is this? Whose world is this? Whose world is this? What kind of world will our children receive? After all is said and done. What kind of creed must we come to believe? If they are ever to receive one. Vandalism is vandalism. Destruction is destruction, whether it's of lives or property. It's not acceptable. What do you think of the Boston Tea Party? I thought it was wonderful. Ah, thank you. Thank you. 50 cents. Read all about it. Best souvenir you can get. It's getting a little rowdy over there in front of the hotel. People uh, need to realize that rioting is not going to solve the problems. Only Jesus Christ can give them peace like a river and joy like a fountain. These people that are uh, distressed about what's going on in the world, they need to realize that only Jesus Christ is the answer. And he's angry. I don't got no sweat labor or nothing. It's just me. We love don't close me down. It's just me. And I appreciate y'all. Yeah. This, this is something very educational. Yeah. Last time I seen streets like this in Nam, man. The only thing they had, they were shooting for real. 
dropping. Yeah, we gonna do that. Why don't you start looting? I need size 46 jeans. There was this big, big push before the WTO happened to get people from diverse backgrounds and something other than the activist, middle class oriented thing that was going on and then it happened very spontaneously. The people with the reason to be fucking shit up, the people who have the most reason to be breaking the windows at Nike were doing it. And that, that was one of the best aspects of it. People who needed shoes were breaking the windows and getting shoes and that's the way it should be. So I say that for those who came here to peacefully make their point, I welcome them here because I want them to be integrated into the longer term debate. To those who came here to break windows and hurt small businesses or stop people from going to meetings or having their say, I condemn them. And I'm sorry that the mayor and the governor and the uh, police officers and others have had to go through this, but we need to make a clear distinction between that which we condemn and that which we welcome. can have as much money and stuff as he does while others are starving is just so extraordin extraordinarily absurd that it should just seem obvious to everyone that we need to dismantle private property and that begins by breaking the spell and that's what a smashed window does but what we're going to start seeing more and more is people taking it upon themselves in smaller clusters or affinity groups <coughs> to go out on their own and make some strikes and blows against capital in the state. is abundantly productive. Then, at that moment,
corruption and trickery. for you up to now. Proof. Proof. Proof and everything. real protest I've ever been to and uh, I don't know. Man they were beating with batons and I was watching and just pulling her hair and I mean and I, I, also, I also thought that when they pepper sprayed you I must sound really ignorant but I thought they just pepper sprayed you and a couple of people like held me back and sprayed it right in my eyes and I didn't yeah, know that they were that. Off her goggles they holding her eyes open. Yeah they were ripping off goggles pulling her hair back so her, so her neck Oh, okay. It's okay, it's okay, babe. It's if okay. I cry, it will hurt my eyes. <laughs> I see that you are feeling what we're saying. I want you to know that when you go home and you think about this, that we respect you for feeling this and for showing us that you feel that we're human. Which role? Which role? either live in a soulless, wealthy, colonial power like America, or you can choose to live in a colony that, is, that has been taken over by the colonial power, and now people are forced to live in company homes, work in factories with barbed wire fences around them, suck in poorly ventilated air, and produce widgets for 12 hours a day at the age of 12 for 
basement wages their whole lives. You, you see this neighborhood as an oasis from it. Both an oasis from it and a staging point for one part of a revolution against that whole system. Revolutionary. Revolution is a loaded word. It's a meaningful, significant, serious word. Yeah. And it's it's a word that causes a lot of us to go through a lot of personal hardships that are far more serious than the hardships, for example, suffered by the owner of the Seattle Nike store when his windows are busted out. So everyone thought that the, the property destruction and sabotage that happened at the WTO was like this big, big significant thing, so different than what's happened before and just really over the line. But that's the way it's been going in Europe and internationally at these um, international trade events for years. And there's a whole international precedent for it. In Geneva, at the last WTO ministerial, there were riots. Um, at, the G8, at, the, at the G8 meeting in Cologne last year on June 18th, um, there was massive protest. The, um, the City of London financial district was taken over. It's futures exchange shut down. Millions of dollars worth of damage done. And that was just in London. And then, of course, there was what happened in Eugene. And that's, that is sort of the thread that people picked up on and said, oh, all of the destruction that's happening in <coughs> Seattle came from Eugene. But the, the, if that's not true. There's this whole international and historical precedent for what happened. We're having a standoff against the cops. And if you see them up there with their water cannons and tear gas, yeah. this is people power in action. This, 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 is the start, this is the start of the revolution. It's on the agenda today. What's the plan after this? There's a, there's a big labor there's march there's today. There's a big labor march today. The plan is to take Seattle and have fun with it, I guess. What's the WTO all about? It's all about greed. It's all about, look at these kids up here. They got a sign up that says, don't trade our future. For these young kids in the street today, it's about their future being traded off by corporations who frankly don't give a shit what happens to them. They're a powerful, powerful group of people. And they make decisions behind closed and locked doors that affect the lives of every American, you and me, and many of the people on this earth. Membership is not only comprised of financial giants like David Rockefeller, but also politicians like President Clinton and former Presidents Bush and Carter. Trilateralism refers to the Trilateral Commission, which was organized in 1973 by David Rockefeller and many other people. And it basically has to do with the management of the entire globe, the management of the world economy in the interest of global corporations and banks. are used to treating the world as their labor force and market and everything else. They feel perfectly comfortable making decisions that affect thousands, tens of thousands, millions of people, that affect not just one country, but many countries. It's how they operate.
propaganda that just supports itself that you can walk down the street in just a totally insane situation and, and all the propaganda just makes it all look normal and I think we need to start you know skewering it around and you just, I just want people to like walk down the street and just freak the fuck out you know I want them to like you know look at some billboard and just like look at a bunch of cars and look at look at a McDonald's and just go what the fuck's going on how do I how do I get out of this system you know what do I gotta do you know that's my goal one penny out of every one hundred thousand dollars and give it to some stupid half-assed quote-unquote non-profit organization who appease the conscience of the blind lemmings but only if it's a tax deductible with overfed overdressed and all-out overprivileged Sally Struthers for its spokesperson say the WTO don't be slow the world's getting smaller we got a lot of room to grow say the WTO the biomedical strikes are restrictions of labor I think the past got some women and some children and a Bangladesh Working for the money to ride the very best Well, let's make it in America, meet something I can We'll be westernizing the world until the very end Oh man, that was sweet. Yeah, really be down there? Oh yeah. 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 No, I'll be down there tomorrow. Probably. Yeah. Check it out. Thanks, man. Are you guys burning recyclable stuff? Yeah. Kind of. Does that make any sense? Yeah. To burn recycling? That means they won't get paid for it. It's really lame. I'm Evan. I'm a freelance writer currently working for Rolling Stone. And I'm down here writing about the dreaded Eugene anarchists. Yeah. They terrify a nation <laughs> and fascinate us at the same time. They have to pretend that they can say it's from Eugene because that way they can, you know, arrest people, investigate people, do whatever they want, and that way they can sensationalize it and get rid of it and polarize it and, and reify it so that it's not a changing phenomena. But because changing tactically and building is what this is all about. And, and to say it's about Eugene means it's not about Portland or Seattle or any of these other places. And it, and it discredits everything that's happening there. And, it, and it's an attempt to polarize what's happening here and, and slow it down. These are the days of the apocalypse. Uh. Ain't no stopping this. Yeah. Yeah. Street revelation. My roots are planted in concrete and tablets. Damage forever is equal to mics when I grab them. As the plan is dead, so there's a plan that sends most people the shady. Pushes beat the man, the lens off his life is tragic. Man, friends deceased, been yelling for peace, but watch violence increase. Baby stash and dumpsters, families broken. At age 16, learn to kill the pain by smoking. Herb that was shipped over US lines, broke down and distributed by the nickel when the dime crimes on the rise. Kids want to get rich quick and cry like children when shackled. Shit's thick, ain't no way to duck it. Humans are kicking buckets, plus it hasn't changed since the days of the muskets. Keep the mind straight, erase mental enslavement. Hard luck and times has grown from the pavement. These are the days of the apocalypse. So far, six seals are broken, ain't no stopping this. The days go by, we go closer to the seventh. Anxious to break it, scope it, keep it ready to set it. Don't let it, you might be ready. Yeah, I said it, get those worldwide negative vibes. We need the dead and prophecy. Diseases all the nations You can read it anywhere in street revelations
together and drug smugglers. Hard knocks ain't the school. It's a fortress like Fort Knox. A way of life affected by guns, lies, and crack rocks. Cops are shifty. Wise guys with death in their guys. License to kill. They'll escort you to fire in electric chairs or by lethal injection. I peep the system as a whole and can't digest it. It's all set up to keep the poor down. While feds and corporations spread drugs in your town, they hide well through media, secret societies, council of foreign relation. They spy on me. Total control of life is what they craving. Knowledge is street, grown from the pavement. These are the days of the apocalypse. So far, six seals are broken. Ain't no stopping this. The days go by. We go closer to the seventh. Anxious to break the scope. Keep it ready to set it. Don't let it. You might be granted. Yeah, I said it. Get us worldwide. Negative vibes. We need a dead and prophecies fulfilled. Diseases of the nations. You can read it anywhere in street revelations. one who believes that the property is more sacred than human beings and their ideas and sometimes pro property is in a I mean, maybe it's not the end of the world to damage property. Day two, this is a sad day as well because we descended again into civil unrest and we're to the same point we were last night it seems, a stare down between police and the demonstrators. What do you think about all this, Russ? I like it, I like it a lot. More of it, oh, excuse me. Get people active, get people active. Let's get this stuff to change. Right. Yeah, let's kick some ass, Tim. The street itself is actually belongs to the to the uh, to the cars legally, but if you're on the sidewalk, they can't do a thing about you. People up in here coming up at me like with all types of peace bullshit. I'm just like, man, this is not a peaceful. This ain't about peace. The cops ain't seeing peace. Nobody's gonna be peaceful here, man. People can be peaceful, but it don't matter. Police ain't trying to see peace, so it don't even fucking matter. I don't know why you guys try to be all friendly. Man, show them what you can do, man. Fuck this, man. South here. South Seattle, motherfuckers. I can't help you if you're not on the side. Seattle in my hood, man. If you clear the streets, I think there's a reasonable chance that we're going to win this confrontation. But you got to get off the street. Can you ask him to stop firing for Off the street. That's it. So our streets, man. So, what do you guys think about what's going on here? Good being in the street. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 straight to the cops and talk to them for us. Just get people to the sides of the streets. Hey, look, man. I just went up the street. The politician, he'll walk up the sidewalk, he'll talk to him, everything's gonna be okay, because, you know, he's our politician. Yeah. <laughs>
is going to do what we always thought they were going to do, which is to sensationalize property destruction. And I think that's a good thing. I think we want uh, youth all over America thinking that this is quite the sensational way to act. <laughs> tick, 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 tick. What are you thinking? Tick, 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 tick. tick. I don't know. Anything it's going to be like. Man. I don't know. Uh, we had some reports from family back in the East Coast that, uh, you know, it's, it's some interviews. Smashy, smashy, interview, smashy, smashy, interview, smashy, smashy. Either way, anarchy in the USA is here. Hey, come help, come help. Help? You guys are worse than cops. Do you understand that? I'm trying to you keep the peace. You are worse than cops. I'm trying to keep the People are just trying. Space is asked not to be filmed. I agree. Okay, all right. Okay, you got to think about what you're doing here. What is this rise up, sit down crap all about, huh? No. Yeah, well, it's not peace when they're kicking everybody's ass. And if they're still in jail. Yeah, when I got hit in the back, back with a fucking like grenade hell. last night. Yeah, I've been getting it for the last three days. Oh, okay, okay, the camera's, gone. The, camera's gone. The, camera's gone. the camera's gone. The camera's gone. The camera's gone. The camera's gone. Yeah, but you still think the way you think, no, no, no. and I'm going to continue to speak my mind until everybody figures out what the fuck is going on. Smash the motherfucking state. I agree. There's a few of the peace police are trying to stop you guys doing what you want to do, and they're saying that smash the windows is violence, what'd you say to that? I say it's fucking bullshit. The only way to hurt a corporation is financially. If by hurting a corporation financially, I mean, you would cost them $9 million worth of damage in one day, right? The only way to stop them is to hurt them monetarily. You can't put a corporation in jail. You can't put a um, corporation, you know, like, you can't spank a corporation. The only way to spank a corporation is by smashing the fuckers. Someday we're all going to be dancing on the graves of all of these corporations together, and we're going to forget about this whole argument that we constantly have, this conflict in our scene, you know. And and it's really all about unity, and it's also about standing up for yourself and defending yourself when you're getting your ass kicked, and that's really important. There's nothing in the world like running with a group of 200 people, all wearing black, and realizing each of you is anonymous. Each of you can liberate your desires. Each of you can uh, make a difference right there because everyone has your back, everyone's there together, everyone's there for the same reason. And then to do that in the middle of you know, the most intense police presence in downtown Seattle, they did that despite the cops being there. They did it under the watching gaze of the cops because they couldn't be stopped. were cast in darkness and the ocean turned to blood and the electric gods of progress became wagons in the mud well the multitude of slaves and knaves grumbled as they grew and what they saw it was like a pot of simmering stew well the mind was being torn between the dreamer and the dream which was exactly what it was but wasn't what it seemed and at cafes and the crossroads, they spoke of what they knew And what they thought was like a pot of simmering stew People were fighting for the forests and the ground on which it stood They were fighting on the front lines of their own neighborhood They were fighting against the tyrants who chained them all around And they beat them when their plastic-coated house of cards fell down I'm 
here to watch 60 Minutes. Oh, yeah. It's my new favorite TV show, yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. These are pictures of the Seattle riots that you've never seen before. They were shot on home video by the anarchists themselves. The idea was to document abuses by the police and to glorify their revolution. A revolution against the United States, against technology, against modern society. Just Tuesday, after, as everybody's getting marched up this way, I'm trying to get some groceries to come back to my place. I see his kids sitting from the stocking cap on the ski goggles. I go, what the hell are you here for? You know, what? It, what's your big cause? Because I'm just here to see history, man. The anarchists were a tiny fraction of the thousands who marched on Seattle, but they were a catalyst. Their hammers shattered any hope that the World Trade Meeting would recover from its chaotic start. Hey, find your camera, they're Allow these small little fractions to come in. Like the Eugene anarchists or something. Exactly. Seattle Police Chief Norm Stamper, four days before he resigned. There's, there's one group in Eugene that is claiming credit for all of this. They're basically saying that they uh, disrupted, if you know, their effort was to close down WTO, that they were successful in disrupting it. They were successful in trashing our city. <laughs> Stamper was talking about Eugene, Oregon, yeah! the home of about 100 militant anarchists who advocate violence against big business. they're doing there ain't nothing new. I mean, you think they would have known what happened in, in all the other big cities, you know? I think, I think they just kind of want it to happen. Yeah. You know, that way they can move in and, and blame somebody, you know? They're not blaming themselves. Who's blame who? Uh, who's blaming who? Yeah, that's, that's just what it is. Who's blaming who, you know? I mean, who's in power? Who's in control? Right. Sure ain't us. We don't want to split hairs among our brothers and sisters who are expressing the frustration. Get you smashing the windows of a Starbucks or a Nike store. What's the point? Economic incentive to not hold meetings like that at all, much less in the Northwest, and psychological incentive to reconsider the kinds of the kind of society that we live in that fills our world with Starbucks and McDonald's. I know what was there before Planet Hollywood went in. It was a low-income apartment building. Those people were, were relocated and the building was bulldozed. And who knows where they went? Nobody paid any attention. Who cares? They're homeless people now. You know? So now it's Mickey Mouse store. Now it's Nike Town. I'm not going to cry for their windows, I'm sorry. Capitalistic corporate pigs driving Mercedes, Benzes, so stinking rich, they live up there, 700, 800, 9,000 dollars a month, living like king shit. I started the Boston Party right here in Seattle. I started the Boston Party. We need a revolution. Take care. So were you guys breaking windows or something? Or? Oh, right. We no, were standing we there. We were assembled. We were As singing. is our constitutional fucking right. Uh -huh. We were singing. We were peacefully assembled. We were and sitting. We were, when they started gassing us, we were sitting on the ground. The overreaction of some cops in Seattle gives the revolutionaries new ammunition. Basically, the fascist underbelly of the beast has come out for everybody to see, you know, and it's even the local media, the mainstream local media has had to take a deep breath and say, this is out of line, you know, this is uncalled for, and it, it was called for, actually, but in order to understand how it was called for, we have to understand what capitalism is, what capital is, who runs the show, and who the police work for, and where they get their orders from, then we'll understand how it is called for. And we have 
to admit that so we know what we're up against. If we say it's uncalled for and they're out of line, then we're saying that it's just an aberration and we can reform it and, and they can see the error of their ways and they will change. They won't. Um, power has to be seized from them. You stare at a television and you see logos and, and you're in a daze and these symbols pop up everywhere in your life. When, when that is shattered, it breaks a spell and we're trying to get people to wake up before it's too late. But then there's all these rules for how you're allowed to use your body as an activist. And uh, the black block is the realization that those rules don't apply, that, that our lived experience is more important and that resisting together is more important than any of the rules which we're going to place on ourselves. So there's nothing, there's nothing in the world like running with a group of 200 people all wearing black.